So we can see all the moving parts, the way the body moves, the way the club moves. And understanding, having a good picture of the shape of the swing as far as the movement of the club is vital. I see so many golfers who really misinterpret the shape of the swing. They think it moves straight back and through, almost in a pendulum shape. You see others who swing it on a baseball or a tennis plane. Now certainly, the shape of the swing is determined by the club that we're using. Okay, so when I address a golf ball, we can see, I'm using my lead bar here, it's angled, it's pitched down at this angle. Now it's important when we swing the club back or swing the bar back that it pretty much follows that same angle. We don't want to distort that position either here or here. The closer we can keep it to this plane, the better. So as we swing it back, you can see it almost follows the giant circle back and around my head, back down, and then through the other side. You can see as I swing back, it moves slightly inside this line. We, if we call this the target line where the tip of this bar is on, that will go through towards the target. It goes inside, up and around, down, up and around the other side. And as we can see in these 3D graphics, which really makes it very clear, you can see the perfect shape of the swing, the circular shape. These 3D graphics really point out the shape of the golf swing. It looks like a giant wheel tilted on its side. Now from a different angle, it's very plain to see the shape and the plane of the swing. It's neither horizontal nor vertical, somewhere between the two, pretty much the angle of the golf club in actual fact. You can see the club moves back slightly inside, up and around the golfer, and then retraces a very similar path coming down all the way through to the finish. It's imperative that you visualize the shape of this swing, because this plane is what allows you to hit consistent golf shots. One of the big problems in golf is that there are a lot of things to remember and it's very difficult to go out and try to play this game thinking of a dozen different things. You get tied up in knots, you create so much tension and one of the keys to play good golf is that you have to be pretty relaxed. So what the swing is all about is learning to create good habits and one of the things that I really believe in are doing one or two little drills or exercises to help cement these habits, create the proper muscle memory whereby you can go out and play golf and not really have to think about your swing. So doing a few of these little drills which I'm going to show you now, you can do them at home, that's the beauty of it, you can really develop a good understanding of your technique. Those of you that are beginners, you don't have any bad habits, so now you're creating some good ones. Those of you who've been playing for a while and have developed some bad habits, doing these little drills will help to change that. Now the first thing I want you to do is get a 9-iron in your hand, so it's a fairly lofted club, remembering that the higher the number of iron, the higher the ball will go, and normally about 10 yards between each club. So a 9 iron is going to go 10 yards, say, shorter than an 8-iron. And all the way up through to about a 3-iron or even a 2-iron, it's about a 10-yard increment. But at this stage, what I want you to do is get a short iron in your hand, a 9-iron, and we're going to do a couple of little exercises. Now, first thing I want you to do is take two clubs, and make a cross. Okay, right. Put one at right angles to the other. The one in this direction representing your target line. Now simply all I'm going to do is place this one in the middle. So basically it's positioned in the middle of my feet. So I'm going to stand very narrow for this little exercise. All you're going to do is pick up a club with your right hand and grip it very lightly. One of the things we try to do is to really feel the weight of the club, very important. You don't want to grip the club tightly. See, the golf club is a relatively light object. With my lead bar that I was swinging earlier, it tends to swing me and put me in the correct position. With this club being that much lighter, we've got to allow it, allow it to swing. We don't want to try to put it in position. Very important to let the club swing. See, what we have to really do ultimately here is to learn to make a swing and let the ball just get in the way of the swing. We don't want to attempt to hit it. That's where most golfers go wrong. We see a lot of golfers who when they start or who have even been playing for many years who slice the ball. 
And the reason that happens is because they get to the top of the swing and they try to hit it and help the ball up in the air. So there's a saying in golf, you have to allow the club head to do the work. There's a little bit of weight down at the bottom and it will allow, it, it'll do it itself if you let it. If you try to help the ball up in the air, that's where most problems happen in this game. So, right, so all I'm going to do is take the club in my right hand, pretty much put it down towards my fingers, and I'm just going to allow it to swing back and forward in a nice easy manner. So it bounces on my right shoulder and then bounces on my left shoulder. You'll notice as I do this that it follows that plane that we described a little earlier. And it's a very natural motion. Right shoulder, left shoulder. Right shoulder, left shoulder. And as I'm doing this you can see that my feet are just rolling just a little bit. We'll describe this in more detail as we go on. But just suffice to know as I do this. My feet just roll just a little bit. So very narrow stance, right shoulder, left shoulder. Now the club in the middle here is designed to show us pretty much where impact would be. In other words, where we strike the ball. So obviously you wouldn't want to come in like this. We wouldn't want to come in like that. Ideally, the club has to return to the position where it started at address. So remember, right shoulder, left shoulder. Just do this a few times. You can see how my right elbow is just folding down. And just a nice, easy little movement just to get the feeling of the weight of the club. Now, now what I'm going to ask you to do is swap hands. Because understanding what each hand does in the swing, which what each arm does in the swing, is very, very important. So now what I'd like you to do is to what we call choke down on the club. Go down the club a little bit, maybe two or three inches, nearly to the end of the grip. Hold it in your left hand, and this time, just make little half swings going back and forward. Look at my watch. As I swing back, my watch points outwards, and my thumb points up. So here we go. Thumb points up, point my watch out, and then swing it down. So my watch now is looking at the target as we swing through, and then once again up into this position with my thumb up in this direction. So we can see thumb up thumb up. Now just doing this a few times, still swing it on that same plane, on that same path. See I'm not taking it out here or taking it in here, I'm just letting it swing naturally up and down, nice and easily, and there we go. Now this will give you a great sensation of what the arms are doing in the swing. Now further to help you to understand this, we've got, it's not a squash racket, it's almost a, what they call a racquetball racket in America, and we put it on the end of a club. So I'm not quite sure what sport we're playing here, but we'll have a go. Now all I want you to do is picture the face of the racket, and you can see as I swing it back, it gradually just opens it's like a door. It opens, you can see my thumb points up as it comes down. It's now closing, hopefully be square at the point of contact, and then closes all the way through to this finished position. So pretty much what I'm doing back here is a mirror image through there. So you can do this quite nicely with a tennis racket. If you have a tennis racket lying around the house, very easy just to picture this shape of the swing because that's what you have to get into your mind the shape of the swing and understanding that ideally what we have to do is return the back of this left hand squarely at impact and that's how the ball goes straight to add the speed in which we'll get into in a little while we just add a little bit of body motion but understanding what your right hand is doing going back and what your left hand is doing going back and through and then tying the two together is what you really need to understand in the beginning. Now, the set, check and go drill. I'm going to show you an ideal way to get in the proper slot at the top of the backswing. I've always felt that if you can get the club into a good position halfway back, the rest is pretty simple. All you've got to do is complete your turn and you're going to be in the right place at the top ready to come down. Now we call this drill the set, check and go drill. Basically, what we're trying to do is get you into the right position halfway back, check it, bounce it a couple of times, complete your turn and then go ahead and hit it. You'll find it's an amazing way of getting in that proper position. You see, I find that most players, they have all their problems in the early stages of the backswing to a point where, say, the left arm is parallel to the ground. People either take it inside, they pick it up, they do a number of things which really creates a whole lot of problems and from there on the swing gets worse. So if you're in the right position halfway back, 
complete your turn and hey you've got your whole swing basically so now what we've got to do is certainly get into a good position of address get everything moving away together you can see how my triangle formed by my arms and shoulders moves away together when my hands are just past my right leg which we call the eight o'clock position I like to feel a slight cocking of the wrists and make sure when I'm halfway back that my right arm is slightly above my left arm my left arm's across my body slightly, not straight back or too far across, maybe 30 to 45 degrees across my body, and then making sure that the butt end points somewhere between the ball target line and my feet line. So that's getting the club what we call in the right plane. So simply checking this position, you can get into the right position halfway back. Now, hey, you're in a great spot there to complete the swing and go ahead and hit it. So. It's a good exercise. Just want to practice this on the practice tee. Do this on a regular basis. Let's see how we do. Away together. All right, I feel good there. Now just simply bump it a couple of times, turn my shoulders. Simple as that. Set, check and go. What you've got to do is get halfway back correctly and the rest is easy. The ball drop out drill. For this drill, you're going to need another golf ball to assist you. When players are really playing well and hitting the ball solidly, they've got a good synchronization going between their arms and their body. In other words, the turning of the body and the swing of the arms really match up. They harmonize, and that's so important for good timing. With many good players, I see them get their left arm going too far across the body, which makes them turn too early. Or otherwise, I see a big separation between the arms and the body. So by using a golf ball in this fashion, you'll find that you can cure that problem. Now, all you do is simply stick it under your left arm like this. Okay, so you feel some pressure on your chest, just, just below your armpit here. Feel some pressure. And then as you swing back, the ball should then drop out as you swing your left arm to the top. You see the key being is that everything works away together initially and then the left arm swings up to the top into the correct plane. You don't want to get the club going around you too much and so you don't want to lift it up in this fashion. So away together, allow the ball to drop out. And you can actually hit balls like this as well. It's a fun little drill. So let's see how we do. Simply place it under your left arm. Feels a little uncomfortable to start with, but you'll soon get used to it. Work it away and then let your left arm swing up. Now, if you can do that drill, you'll get your synchronization correct. So remember, away together, swing your left arm up so the ball falls out, and you'll have your timing right and a lot of great shots. The club fallout drill. Now, you may well ask what I'm doing here. Well, really what I'm doing is checking my plane. I have a little drill which really provides a simple test to see if you are in a good position at the top. A good position meaning that you've swung the club on a good plane, which really helps us with consistency. Now, a plane being the fact that you look at the club, see the angle of your shaft, and try to swing it pretty much on that line all the way back. It might get a little steeper than this original shaft looks, but the fact is, if you can approximately parallel that position at the top, you're in good shape. We see many players who swing it too far around them and have too flat a swing plane. And we see other players who swing the club too much up here. Now this little drill, which we call the fallout drill, is very simple. You simply swing it back to the top of your backswing position, loosen your grip, let the club fall out of your fingers, and let the club fall and see where it touches. Generally speaking, it should just about fall on the tip of your shoulder. That will be a very good guideline for you. 